For ACUsports.com, I'm Grant Boone. We continue our preview of ACU football 2018. We've got offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Josh Lamberson. We've got the starting quarterback, Luke Anthony. Luke, let's start with you. It's a really interesting situation because uh, you were the second string quarterback going into last year. By the time the season ended, you it felt to me calling games like you were a, a proven veteran. Take me through the progression of what it's been like, let's say, since November of last year to right now as training camp begins. Yeah, so last year as a backup, I just tried to play my role as best as I could. Um, and when I had my opportunity, the older guys really uh, took me in and you know showed me the ways of how to act and how to lead the guys. So I think they really rallied around me and helped uh, propel me into the role I'm in now. Um, and then throughout summer workouts, it's you know, it's been a different role for me, being a vocal leader more so than I have been in the past year. So it's been a good opportunity, and I think uh, as a team we're coming together. Well, we know where your arm came from because your mom, April, threw out the first pitch of the Rangers game, and it was a fastball inside corner call strike. So uh, we, we know where the athleticism comes from, and your dad was a pretty good athlete in his own right, a former golfer at ACU. So, uh, Luke, there is, though, now that you're a starter, a different feel, isn't there? Yes, sir. Uh, and and what's ex what, do you, what do you feel like is expected of you, or what have they told you is expected of you? Um, the expectations really don't change. It's just like our job is to get the ball to the playmakers ultimately and just execute and um, to get everyone to have effort and attitude at all times. Um, so as a starter, I've just been able to take that role more vocally as a leader than I have in the past. But ultimately, like the expectation hasn't changed. If I do my job and everyone else does their job, um, we're going to be fine. So. In the way that others uh, have mentored and tutored you, uh, how much responsibility do you feel for Samaj Davis and, and some of the other guys who are down on the depth chart at quarterback? Um, kids like Samaj, it's been, it's been pretty neat for me to be a young guy, so I'm not too far removed from where he is today. So um, I, he's never really had like a quarterback coach or anything, so I've been able to work with him on just some mechanic stuff. And I've seen him like progress so much just as a player and as a passer since his time here. Um, so it's a pretty neat opportunity to help the younger guys. You talk about getting the ball to the playmakers. <clears throat> there are some, some playmakers that were not here last year. Some guys came from other schools. Some guys are eligible again. Uh, when you look across, uh, you can call it your toolbox, your arsenal, whatever you want to call it, what do you see among the skill position guys that you have at your disposal? Uh, I just think we have a wide um, array of different skill sets. Um, you know, we have guys who can go vertical. We have guys who are just route technicians and know how to get open. And then, you know, we obviously have that two, three back system right now where you have power and you have speed on the outside. So um, I think we're going to be pretty versatile. And with our offense already putting guys in positions to succeed, I, I think if everyone executes and uh, shows good effort and attitude at all times, we'll be fine. All right, let's talk to your coach here uh, and your coordinator. Was I way off or did, did it seem like that as the season ended, this this was a proven veteran. He only started a couple of games, but there yeah. there there is a there is a presence he has, isn't there? There there really is, and and sometimes I have to remind myself, you know, Luke is going to be a sophomore, you know, and last year he was a redshirt freshman, but you know the way that he carries himself both on and off the the field, the maturity that he has. Um, if you tell people, you know, what how old he is and what year he is, they, they're taken back a little bit because he carries himself much older. Uh, and, and he has a lot of respect from the older guys, which is, you know, sometimes rare in a locker room. And so I've just been so proud of the way that he's been able to mature into his role and really embrace it because he is go just going to be a sophomore but got voted captain uh, and was one of the very – top vote getters that we had and I think that speaks volumes for his character for what he does for our football team both on and off field. You were a quarterback at a high level for a tremendous program at Northwest Missouri State. What will be the biggest challenge for him making that next step? Because well, he, he needs to take another step, yeah, doesn't he? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I think one thing that, that we always talk about with Luke, um, Luke is such a perfectionist. Um, and it, it happened today in practice, for example. He, he comes off the field and he's talking about three plays ago, and, and he has such a phenomenal memory, and he's, his football IQ is, is tremendous. But Luke's got to be able to, to live in the moment, move on to the next play, transition quickly, because that's how football moves. You know, we can go back and talk about something in between the series or uh, after the game or at halftime, whatever it is, make our adjustments. But sometimes Luke has a tendency to let things dwell in the back of his mind a little bit and, instead of being able to just move on to the next one. That's something that we're working on. But it also it goes back to the fact that he just wants to be perfect in everything that he does. And, and that's what he really pushes himself to be. And he holds himself to a really high standard. Coach Doral talks about everyone doing his 111. Yeah. And so while uh, sometimes you get your name in the paper when you're the quarterback <laughs> and you get stats next yeah. to your name, there are a bunch of guys that will be on the field whose stats won't jump out at people because we don't measure it in the same way. But you as the O coordinator, 
have your own metric right. system, the way of, of gauging how a player is doing. What do you want to see in these next four weeks before we take the field against well, Baylor? I think one of the things that, it, just echoing on what Coach Doral has really set out for our entire football team, uh, you know, and how we're judging people, and, and if they're moving around with great tempo, uh, if they're having a great attitude, if they carry themselves with great body language, if mm. they're, it, the execution part, our, our kids are really doing a, a fairly good job of that. This is the second year in the system. They're fairly familiar with our terminology, our vocabulary, our expectations, things like that. And, you know, that's just going to continue to get better. Um, you know, one thing that we have to take the next step in in everybody from a totality perspective on our football team is is that all right here, here's where we are and this is what this is where we're at and this is where we need to go okay. you know and, and to take that next step from a physicality standpoint from an our, our own personal accountability standpoint uh, the expectations that we have taking it to another level and I think if uh, we continue to do that we can do some special things last thing as offensive coordinator can you overstate just the difference it feels for you from year one to year two as we get camp underway oh no, to piggyback on on what coach Doral has said as, as well you know I think one of the things that as we look out there just knowing everybody, uh, knowing their names, and, and then knowing their skill set too, what they can do, and, and maybe what they need work at, and you know, being able to put guys in, in certain positions because you know it's a it's a game plan system. So we really try to create mismatches for our guys based on what their skill set is, and so now we have a pretty good handle on. All right, I I know what Luke can throw really well. Mm -hmm. I know what DJ can run well. Kalen can run well, and so we can mix and match that and create scenarios where they can go out and be successful. Here's my last last question: yeah. Does the offensive philosophy at all? change or are you are you always looking for little tweaks or do you keep it consistent from year one to year two well it's it's uh I'll talk out of both sides of my mouth on, on the answer to that because we're always tweaking things okay. and, and we're always looking for uh, ways in which we can improve and get better. Um, but our core foundation for what we believe in, um, you know, based out of a power running game, uh, being able to run the ball when we want to run the ball, being able to throw the ball when we want to throw the ball and not letting the dict uh, defense dictate everything that we're doing, that stays intact. Um, but also looking out there and seeing, all right, we have some different versatility than what we had last year mm -hmm. uh, from a skill set perspective and from an offensive line perspective, you know, that will enable us to do some other different things. Josh Lamberson, offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, redshirt sophomore quarterback Luke Anthony. Our preview of ASU football 2018 continues here on ASUsports.com.